professional cuddling in Malaysia and Singapore on Pro Cuddle Hustle podcast. Hello, my beautiful listeners. Tis I, your host. A warm salutations to every person who has found me through one of my interviews. I recently was interviewed on the podcast Susias Are My Favorite. Please go give it a listen. Also, if you listen to that interview on Spotify, the podcast host included the entire video of me saying what I had to say. I had no idea you could upload a hour-long video to Spotify, but you learn something new every day. I have made some mistakes recently, like my previous podcast episode is called Pro Cuddling in Mexico and Latin America before that episode aired, but after I scheduled it to publish on Thursday, I discovered some more professional cuddlers in Mesoamerica. So I anticipate an updated episode soon. As for this episode, whilst recording, I referred to Nowruz as an Afghani holiday. Turns out it's an Iranian holiday. That's my bad. I should have known better. It's not okay to confuse different tribes of Arab people. There are communities within communities within communities. I made this podcast to build bridges with communities, so I need to hold myself to a very high standard. I cannot expect others to hold me accountable. Integrity is how you govern yourself when no one is watching, and quite literally, no one is watching me as I speak into my microphone. If this is the first episode you ever listened to for Pro Cuddle Hustle, then I'm glad you're listening. My name is Felicity Azra. I, I've been a professional cuddler since March of 2018, so this year marks my five-year anniversary. I started this podcast in late 2019, and, and not too long ago, I decided to make every episode focus on the cuddle industry in a different region of the world. And without further ado, let's get on with the podcast. Malaysia. Over 33 million people live in the Southeast Asian nation. Like Thailand, Malaysia has a monarch and a prime minister. The official language is Malay. 63% of residents are Muslim, 18% are Buddhist, 9% are Christian, 6% are Hindu, 1% practice a Chinese religion like Confucianism. Malaysia is divided into 13 states and 3 federal territories. Kuala Lumpur is the capital and biggest city in Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur is also one of the top tourist destinations in the world. The South China Sea separates Malaysia into two regions, Peninsular Malaysia or West Malaysia and East Malaysia. The top industries in the country are electronics, construction, and automobiles. The electrical and electronics sector is the number one contributor to the manufacturing industry in Malaysia. Data shows that the sector accounted for about 32.8% of the total exports in 2013 while providing employment to about 27.2% of the total workforce in the same year. In Southeast Asia, the industry is the largest while it ranks in the 23rd position on a grander global scale. In a single year, the sector turns out well over half a billion vehicles. The construction industry is well over $32 billion. I found yet another news article about an American professional cuddler from a Malaysian publication. I also found articles about British and American professional cuddlers on Malaysian publications. It's annoying because I found several professional cuddlers in Malaysia on Cuddle Companions. Some were women and some were men. On CertifiedCuddlers.com, there is one professional cuddler located in Malaysia. She doesn't publicly list her pricing, but her advert says she's willing to travel internationally for work and has a business email and a Facebook page, although her Facebook page is inactive. Loyat.net is a forum website in Malaysia. It's similar to Fortune. I found several conversations about professional cuddling on there, but it's obvious it's an outgroup making comments on my industry. I found a 2008 Reuters article titled, Sharia lawyers say extend cuddle ban to non-Muslims. They don't list who wrote the article, probably because if they did, they may not be alive tomorrow. Kuala Lumpur. Islamic lawyers meeting in Malaysia want an existing ban on unwed Muslim couples from cuddling or holding hands to be extended to non-Muslims caught flirting with a faithful. Experts in Sharia law, which currently applies only to Malaysia's Muslims, proposed at a seminar that there should be a civil law to deal with non-Muslims found committing the Islamic crime of Kalwat, or close proximity with a Muslim. I'm not going to read this entire article. It's upsetting to read, and as I speak, it is the first day of Ramadan in 2023. Spring equinox just passed. No ruse is the Afghani holiday to celebrate the spring, and that was a day
day of mourning for a lot of Afghan Muslims and Afghans in general. I'm not of Afghan descent, nor am I Muslim, so I want to be as respectful as possible, but I am not one of the many people, I should say, not one of the many Kurdistani women who will be spending this holy month suffering. I will put resources in the description for this podcast episode because I hate it when people say, oh no, this horrible thing happened. Damn, that's crazy. If you come across some very upsetting news, which is unfortunately very often, please do your part. Find ways to help. Okay, hashtags can make a difference. You can do more than just spread a hashtag for one day. It's obvious how I feel about these policies. These are human rights violations. I made my opinion loud and clear during my episode on professional cuddling in Thailand and Indonesia. I found a 2021 article from Union of Catholic Asian News. The article is titled, Malaysian State's Sharia Law Criminalizes Conversion from Islam. Punishments include a maximum jail term of three years and a fine up to 5,000 ringgit or 1,200 US dollars or six strokes of the cane. This is another very upsetting article to read, but if you scroll down, it does say, Sisters in Islam, a Malaysia-based women rights group, issued a statement on November 2nd to decry the new laws. Quote, we find these developments concerning and dangerous as they violate fundamental principles of democracy by suppressing critical thought and expression through arbitrary provisions and punishing those who do not toe the line, unquote, the group said. I'm assuming that most people who are listening to this podcast live outside of Malaysia and they're probably thinking I have to go in and help them. I appreciate your magnanimous charity. There are problems with outsiders thinking that they know better than the people who are being hurt. The people who are suffering the most, they know the most. They're the smartest people in the room, not you. In fact, you should not barge your way into the room. This article says that 10% of Malaysians are Christian and they're being targeted and I would hate for the evangelical Christians in the United States to barge in and enact some good old American democracy in Southeast Asia. That's not how justice will be attained. Justice has never been attained through the United States being the world police. And to all the Muslim professional cuddlers and Muslim cuddle clients listening to this, Ramadan Mubarak, I don't know what else you say during this time of year. I did not find any cuddle agencies or cuddle parties in Malaysia. Hopefully that changes soon. On to Singapore. The Republic of Singapore doesn't technically have a capital because they're a city-state. The official languages are English, Malay, Mandarin, and Tamil. 74% of the residents are ethnically Chinese. The most prominent religion is Buddhism. 30% of residents are Buddhist. In 2022, Singapore's population was 5.6 million. Singapore is the largest port in Southeast Asia and one of the busiest maritime ports of the world. Depending on what source you use, Singapore has either the second or the third greatest population density in the world. The countries that are most dense population-wise are very small ones like Macau and Singapore, Hong Kong, Sint Martin. I briefly researched Sint Martin in my Caribbean episode. The biggest industries in Singapore include biotechnology, petroleum refining, and financial services. Several international companies have established their manufacturing bases in Singapore. These firms include the likes of Novartis, Abbott, and others. Foreign firms wishing to pour investment in Singapore are able to take advantage of both of the main biotech parks. These parks provide benefits such as tax breaks, infrastructure, and incentives to these firms. Singapore is within the global top three countries that have export refining centers. In 2017, the nation's oil exports stood at around 68 million tons. In the Global Financial Centers Index of 2017, the nation was third in terms of the competitiveness of their financial sectors. Only New York City and London were ranked above. The services offered by the financial institutions include things like internet banking, multiple currency support, savings accounts, checking accounts, wealth management systems, and many more. During my research, I came across this public Facebook group. As I record this, they have about 70 members. The group description reads, a cuddle party is a playful social event designed for adults to explore communication boundaries and affection. You can come to a cuddle party to meet new people and enjoy amazing conversations. Here is what we do at our cuddle parties. Cuddle, be cuddled, have fun, practice asking for what we want, practice saying no to what we don't want. They do not have that many photos in their photos tab and they only have two videos in their videos tab. There is nothing to be found in their files tab. But since this group is public, you can view all 70 members' Facebook profiles. So I would define a act 
active Facebook group as a group where there are multiple new status updates per day or per week. If it's once a month, I would not consider it active. So I wouldn't consider Cuddle Party Singapore, the Facebook group, an active group. But they do update about once a month. They had two posts in December of 2022, none in January of 2023, one new status update in February, and it is still March as I record this, but they've only had one status update so far in March of 2023. So this is a lot better than Thailand when I researched them for my 23rd episode of Pro Cuddle Hustle. This Facebook group was created on October 6th, 2017 by Jackie K, who is originally from England. And on October 28th, 2017, the Cuddle Party Singapore Twitter was born. They have about 30 followers, but are following over 500 Twitter accounts. And on the same day that the Cuddle Party Singapore Twitter was born, they tweeted this article from straightstimes.com. The article title is A Rare Hug from Daddy During Special Visit to Prison. So not directly about professional cuddling, but this Twitter account is eons better than the Twitter account I ripped apart during my Trinidad and Tobago section in my Caribbean episode. Go listen to episode 24 of my podcast if you haven't already. The Twitter page frequently retweets Cuddlist and Cuddle Sanctuary. To my surprise, there is no official Twitter page for Cuddle Party trademark. In fact, I don't know if Cuddle Party has official social media pages. The first Cuddle Party announcement in the Singapore Facebook group was for November 24th, 2017. I realized I probably should read the bio for their Twitter page. A Cuddle Party is a workshop three to four hours long, starting with one hour introduction, where you practice saying yes or no, and how to ensure boundaries are respected. In April of 2018, they hosted a Cuddle Party Talk event, which sounds like a Q&A forum for people curious about Cuddle Parties, jumped to June 9th, 2018, where the Cuddle Party was held in the Tanjong Pagar area. I am hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Jackie K even offered a 50% off discount code for the June 9 Cuddle Party. In my notes, I wrote Brits in Singapore cuddling because I don't really understand the status update from Jackie K on September 25th, 2018. The caption reads, as an interim event, while we are building up our membership, we are doing an event called Coffee and Hugs. Just like it sounds, we have coffee or tea and have some hugs. The venue is a shop near Talak Ayer MRT, so please do RSVP. The event is on the 17th of October, starting at 7 p.m. and is on our British and International Group website. So please do get the details and RSVP here. And then there is a link for www.britishgroupssg.com. I'm well aware that a lot of British people are in Singapore, but why are there cuddle parties in Singapore only for British people? Is it because of language barriers? Is that it? The link is broken. The website no longer exists. I have a feeling that the Wayback Machine is not going to dig up anything. For those of you who don't use Facebook, there is a difference between a Facebook page, a Facebook profile, and a Facebook group. So a Facebook profile is of an individual. They don't have to be a public figure. It's just their personal profile. A Facebook page is basically a public figure page, but corporations and organizations can have their own Facebook pages. Despite there being a Cuddle Party Singapore Facebook group, they didn't have an official page. So on November 6th, 2018, the Cuddle Party Singapore Facebook page was born. And according to their page, they call themselves a, quote, community organization, unquote. They have over 70 followers. This is what the about section of the Facebook page says. CuddlePartySingapore.com. Send message to Jackie at CuddlePartySingapore.com. And then they plug in their Twitter link. In the Cuddle Party Singapore Facebook group, I could not find the second time coffee and hugs happened. I found a status update for their third coffee and hugs event. And I know it's their third because the caption reads, our last two coffee and hugs have been a great success. Don't miss out on the next one, which is on Wednesday, the 14th of November. RSVP in details, Jackie. So in this status, they do not say anything about it being a British people only cuddle party, which I like. And in 2019, they finally created a flyer for these coffee and hugs events. So the flyer is, I'm guessing a photo taken at the first, maybe second coffee and hugs event. It reads, join us for coffee. The text is not centered, which irks me. Join us for coffee and hugs, Friday, 
14th of January. This text is a bit difficult to read because it's all in white, and a person who's hugging in the photo is wearing a white shirt. But thankfully, I don't have dyslexia, so I can read Friday 18th January 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. 20 Singaporean dollars socializing, light refreshments, a chance to give and receive hugs. The status update for this flyer reads: Come join us for coffee and hugs Friday evening. PM me for details. In February of 2019, the Facebook page said: Come join us at our next coffee and hugs event on the 15th of February from 9 p.m. They do this a lot. They raise things like 15th of month from 9 p.m. But these are two hour long events. According to their Facebook page, their next coffee and hugs event was on Saturday, the 2nd of March. Jump to September 12th, 2019. They had a cuddle party. Another coffee and hugs event on October 10th, 2019. Yet another coffee cuddle party on October 23rd, 2019. So yes, twice in one month. There was this Facebook event hosted by Mark Smith. Instead of creating a status update on their page with a link to the cuddlepartysingapore.com website, the Facebook group itself created an event in which 65 people responded. The event occurred at at night by bakery and bar. It's a bakery and a bar, and it's called at night. I never would have guessed that a bakery or a bar or both would be called at night. But I digress. The duration of the coffee and hugs event was two hours. The description reads: Meet us for coffee slash drinks and some socializing. We have the whole second floor shop house for our event. You will be able to mingle, socialize, and hug attendees. You will be on the second floor. This is very redundant. <laughs> When you arrive, let the staff know you are attending the event on level two. Pay ten dollars to the staff. This entitles you to one free drink. Or house pour drink. So it sounds like one free soft drink or one free alcoholic beverage. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Please share this event with anyone you think could benefit from hugs. According to Mark Smith's Facebook profile, he lives in Singapore and he has about 17 past events, all of them being hugging social events. All of the photos for these Facebook events look like they were taken at only one event. Like they took some photos at one cuddle party and were like, we're gonna use these same. Same three photos for every coffee and hugs for the next several years. I don't know why, but on November twentieth, twenty nineteen, there was a coffee and hugs Facebook event, also hosted by Mark Smith and Cuddle Party Singapore. Same location, same event description, but the duration says one hour. Maybe this was a typo, and maybe I'm being a filthy American, and that's why I believe that's abnormal. If I have a listener who attended this event or multiple coffee and hugs events in Singapore, and I'm wrong. Please tell me that I'm wrong or right. I'll take either or. December fourth, twenty nineteen. Jackie K, not Mark Smith, hosted a coffee and hugs event in Singapore. Same location at night by bakery and bar. The duration is two hours. Same description. I'm not gonna reread that. Same photo. You get the deal. December eighteen. We have another month with two different parties. So December eighteenth, Mark Smith hosted an event, a cuddle party yet again. This one was for two hours. Then we ring in the new year. January eighth, twenty twenty. Mark Smith again hosted a coffee and hugs party. January eleventh, Mark Smith hosted another cuddle party. Just a three day time span. This blows my mind. This is giving me culture shock. Mark Smith, if you are listening to this podcast, why did you host two different cuddle parties within three days in the same location? Not discouraging you from doing that. I just want to know why. <laughs> I've researched the cuddle industry all over the world, and I've never heard of this happening. Anywhere. Moving on to February eighth, twenty twenty, Mark Smith hosted a cuddle party in Singapore. February twenty third, Mark Smith posted a status update in the Facebook group, another coffee and hugs social. The location is not the bakery and bar. It says Harbour Front. There's no hyperlink. I don't know what Harbour Front is, but maybe I have a Singaporean listener and they can tell me what that is. But other than that, instead of starting at five a.m. Pacific time, I forget the time zone for Singapore. This This hugs and coffee social happened at 10 p.m. Pacific time. Not only is the location different, but the start time is different. This is February 2020. Only six people in the Facebook group said that they were interested in this event, where people would be in very close proximity to each other. Only one person RSVP confirmed to this cuddle party on June 10th, 2020. That was the most recent status update from the Facebook page. They don't even have a caption. 
they just share a link from the Straits Times. Remember that news website, except this article title is Scientists Unlock the Secret to the Perfect Cuddle. Just don't squeeze too tight. I feel like I've read the entire article already, so I'm not gonna click on it. Meanwhile, the most recent tweet from the Cuddle Party Singapore Twitter was on May 28th, 2021. It's very underwhelming. They just retweeted a fun fact account. Their contribution was true in all caps and several exclamation points. The fun fact was, quote, when two people embrace or cuddle, their brains release oxytocin, making them feel happy and more connected, unquote. Yeah, that was underwhelming. Cuddle Party Singapore is on Meetup. If you're not familiar with Meetup, it's similar to Eventbrite, but you need to have an account and log in in order to browse Meetup. Jackie K is the one managing the Cuddle Party Singapore group on Meetup, so yes, she's helping facilitate a Meetup group and a Facebook group. I've never created events on Meetup before. I know that if you want to create a group on Meetup, you would have to pay. I don't remember if it's a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, but it costs money to run a group on Meetup, which is why I believe running a Facebook group is superior because you don't have to pay. And as I was recording this, listeners, Archie Kucherenko created a status update within the Cuddle Party Singapore Facebook group. He was announcing, we're excited to invite you to our Cuddle Party extravaganza on Saturday, March 25th. The typical details, da 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 da. And then he has a link to their event page, which is not a Facebook event page, not a meetup event page, but it's on this one website I don't often see get used in the United States, but if you want to take a look, it's cuddle.b4a, yes, the number four, dot app. March 25th, 2023, starts at 2.30 p.m. until 6.15 p.m. I don't know why it's ending at 6.15, but it's on Teluk Ayer Street, da 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 curious about a cuddle party, discover what it's all about on the official website, and then there's a hyperlink. In a world that moves at a breakneck pace, it can be challenging to find moments of tranquility and connection, da 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 this is not a hookup space, da 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 We welcome adults of all genders, orientations, marital statuses, and ages. Admission to the event is by donation, da 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 Join our Telegram channel to stay tuned. Archie Kucherenko is managing a Cuddle Party Singapore Telegram group, and if you're not familiar with Telegram, it's not like the 18th century, 19th century Telegram. Telegram is very similar to WhatsApp. Telegram is a class cloud-based mobile and desktop messaging app. I don't know how well the security is. I am not a cybersecurity expert, although I do like researching that. And going back to Cuddle Party Singapore, the Facebook group, I noticed that Archie Kucherenko in February of this year shared a video from Dr. Yoni Alcan. If you don't know who Dr. Yoni is, he is a Cuddle Party facilitator in San Francisco, California, where I currently reside. I have been to Dr. Yoni's Cuddle Party's before. He is wonderful. So it's nice to see cuddle party facilitators from all the time zones share each other's videos, even if they, I assume, don't personally know each other. I found one professional cuddler in Singapore on Cuddle Comfort. I don't know if she has a business email or LinkedIn or official website or social media. Feel free to email Cuddle Comfort and at them on social media for banning me from their platform. I would love to look at Angelina Chang's profile because I'm pretty sure sure she is the only pro cuddler in Singapore on Cuddle Comfort. Ning is a website builder. I'm name dropping Ning because Cuddle Party Singapore has a inactive website with Ning. CuddlePartySingapore.ning.com. The most recent text post from their inactive website says, due to COVID-19 virus and policy of social distancing, we are stopping events and workshops. We will resume once the social distancing policy is no longer in effect. They really gotta update this because I just read Archie Kucherenko's announcement of a Cuddle Party in March 2023. CuddlePartySingapore.ning.com is both an informational and social website. You can create a profile on it or log in using Facebook. There are some familiar names on that website. Jackie K has a public profile on the official CuddlePartyCom website, but her profile
profile is extremely blank. And on Cuddle Party Singapore's website, it says she last logged in during December of 2021. Someone in the r slash Singapore subreddit dropped a link for Cuddle Party Singapore, but they did not give any context and the comment section went the way you'd expect a typical comment section to go on Reddit. As I was researching, I came across a news article similar to an article I found during my New Zealand research. Please listen to that podcast episode. This CNN article was published in November of 2022. The title is Inside the New Business Snuggle Class Double Beds. Quote, as the aviation industry looks towards a future with more video conferencing and fewer business travelers filling business class seats, it's wooing upmarket leisure passengers to fill the gap. Airlines are hoping that more business travelers will bring their partners for blended or business leisure travel. Yet most business class cabins were designed with the goal of privacy rather than being able to cuddle up next to Pat from accounting. I'm not going to read the whole article, but this reminds me of that one scene in Crazy Rich Asians where the two main characters, this isn't a spoiler, but the two main characters were taking a plane to Singapore and they got that luxury experience where you get to lay down in like a bed on the airplane. And last but not least, if you've peeked at the outline for this episode already on Patreon, you would see that I included a blog that informs you on the strict laws in Singapore. If you plan on traveling to Singapore, whether for business or leisure or both, please do your preliminary research. Singapore has strict laws like absolutely no chewing gum. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you're one of my patrons, thank you so much for your patronage. Your patronage is not only supporting me, but the current and aspiring professional cuddlers and cuddle party facilitators who listen to Pro Cuddle Hustle. I finally, after four years of doing this, got my podcast on some big name platforms, including Apple Podcasts, which has the most streamlined rate and review section amongst podcast platforms. Perhaps I'll read your review in a few future episode to get a complete list of every platform where you can listen to Pro Cuddle Hustle, please visit my link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Pro Cuddle Hustle. One of the new platforms this podcast is on is Radio Public, which I noticed has this blog section. I'm writing something up for Radio Public. I'll submit it. Hopefully they approve of my writing. Please follow Pro Cuddle Hustle on all socials. I recently jumped back on the TikTok train. My username over there is Cuddle Felicity. Believe it or not, it's easier for me to get people's attention on Snapchat than it is on TikTok. Hopefully I'm not shadow banned. Pro Cuddle Hustle is on Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, and Twitter. I am the moderator of r slash professional cuddling. The subreddit has only about 100 members. Please join. Tell everyone on your socials how important this professional cuddling podcast is. I will be sad for the inevitable day where I have covered the cuddle industry everywhere around the world. But when that happens, I will most likely have enough information to write a Wikipedia page for professional cuddling. There's a bare bones Wikipedia page for cuddle party, but there isn't one for professional cuddling. We need a Wikipedia page for that. If you review this podcast, please screenshot your review, put it on social media and tag me to increase the likelihood of me finding your review. I also manage two different Facebook groups. One is Ask a Professional Cuddler. Anyone can join. The second one is titled Professional Cuddlers and SW Only. Please join the latter only if you are a professional cuddler or a sex worker. My email address is felicityazara at gmail.com. If you would like to book a cuddle therapy session with me, screening and deposits are mandatory. Please be vaccinated for COVID. Longer bookings will be prioritized. I accept deposits through Venmo Cash App and Patreon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Working on this podcast is my favorite part out of every day. Besides waking up next to my lover, you have been listening to episode 25 of Pro Cuddle Hustle podcast.